I'm joined now in the studio by Dr. Colin Rubenstein, who's the Executive Director of the Australia, Israel and Jewish Affairs Council. Colin Rubenstein, thank you so much for being here. Your response to the protest at the Opera House last night and the fact that police told Jewish people and people supporting Israel to stay away. Well, it's deeply disturbing and disappointing in the first instance that any Australian would celebrate the slaughters and the butchery uh, that we saw uh, over the weekend. Uh, that's for starters. Is that how you categorise it, that it was a celebration? Uh, the, uh, certainly we saw a celebration on Saturday night. Uh, the demonstration in the Sydney about Town the Hall. In Lakemba yes, on Saturday night? Uh, yes, absolutely in Lakemba. The demonstration which had approval is one thing, also extremely offensive and almost inconceivable and incomprehensible, I think, to most Australians, that you could celebrate uh, such uh, slaughters and uh, barbarism. Uh, but uh, the fact that uh, they were allowed to march to the Sydney Opera House uh, and that no Jews were allowed, uh, I'm sure on security grounds, which the community respected. But nonetheless, it's a deeply disturbing state of affairs. And I think the authorities and certainly the responsible mi ministers involved have a lot to answer for. Australia is a free society. People have the right to protest, don't they? Uh, they have the right to protest within limits. We happen to be a democratic, multicultural Australian society embedded with certain key values of mutual respect and tolerance. It is illegal actually to incite violence, uh, to incite racist hatred, and indeed it's also, I think, illegal to be actually applauding and supporting organisations such as Hamas or Hezbollah or Islamic, uh, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, which have prescribed entities in Australia. So there's a lot for the authorities actually to be looking at today, and most Australians, I'm sure, would be shocked by these events and would agree with me. And I'm pleased to see that the Prime Minister has said that the, uh, the protest outside the Sydney Opera House should not be, have been allowed to go ahead. I think it's profoundly disturbing that we have such a state of affairs in this fair city of Sydney. Um, do you accept the police explanation that the man carrying an Israeli flag at the protest who was subsequently removed by police, that they did that for his own safety? Up to, up to a point, yes. But from what I saw, the way they treated him and the way they behaved and actually the assumptions underlying their, their, uh, their actions, I think, uh, to put it mildly, very problematic. And I think they certainly need examination and reconsideration. We're seeing that vision now. Have you heard from police an explanation that you're satisfied? Not with? directly, but I've seen the explanation that they did it uh, largely for his own protection and his own safety. Up to a point, that's understandable and one can respect that logic. Uh, but from what I saw, the, the way they dealt with him uh, was uh, very problematic, to put it politely. Uh, because the New South Wales Premier Chris Minns has said today that there are conversations that are going to be taking place between New South Wales Police and the Jewish community about ongoing safety. Have you been part of those conversations? No, I'm not directly involved in those conversations, but I understand they are taking place, which is, uh, you know, fit and proper, should be. There's a lot to talk about. I mean, I'm sure the community, uh, you know, uh, respects uh, the intent of the authorities and their performance over the years, which is to provide safety for all Australians, including the Jewish community. Uh, that's appreciated and respected. But I think there's certainly been a lapse of judgment uh, in, in a number of areas here. And uh, yes, I'm pleased that uh, the, the Premier is certainly having second thoughts this morning. Uh, his statements I've heard on radio this morning uh, questioning what had happened. Uh, his uh, statement that, uh, that those protests outside the Opera House uh, and the unadulterated, you know, uh, extreme anti Semitism which we saw demonstrated on the steps of iconic Opera House in Australia, which would go around the world, uh, were not only unflattering, they were profoundly upsetting and disappointing. We're running out of time as we're coming to the end of the hour, but I did want to ask you about what's taking place in the Middle East. Of course, there's been widespread condemnation of the actions of Hamas in southern Israel. Israel has now issued a blockade of Gaza, so no food, fuel, water or medicine will be allowed in. 
Are the Palestinian civilians now going to pay the price for the actions of terrorists? The Palestinian civilians in Gaza have been paying the price of Hamas bestiality for years. And I think an end, uh, the end game here would be to libera help to liberate them from the oppression and despotism of Hamas, which is ruining their lives. They're entitled to a fair uh, and decent life as well, but they're being oppressed by Hamas, uh, just like we've seen in the case of Israel with this extraordinary barbaric attack uh, war that we've seen. And, and it's, the, the rules have changed. It's a different ball game now. Just trying to contain Hamas uh, no longer works. Uh, and Israel, of course, is going to get to the bottom of this in terms of not only their own safety and security, but I believe the safety and security of Gazans and of all Palestinians and indeed the broader Middle East, where, of course, Hamas has tried to upset Colin the normalisation taking place. We've come to the end of our time. Colin Rubenstein, thanks so much. Thanks for having me.